In this lesson, moving forward, I'm going to demonstrate how to insert data into the backend database using a Java program. So, in the previous lessons, we in fact connected to our database and then we created a table and fields. So here, once you have the table structure set up, how do you go about in fact populating that table and then entering data? So let's jump right in and let me go ahead and open up the Java Eclipse editor. So once I'm in the Eclipse editor, I'm going to go right ahead and right click on the default package, create a class. Just give it any name you like. I'm going to call it inserting data. Click finish and this creates a public class. And of course, first things first, here's my first step basically just writing a comment to import the modules right so I need to import java.sql and then I also need to import the driver manager right so java.sql dot driver manager semicolon and then of course my public class inserting data Right after my public class, I need the keyword. So let's go ahead and do public, static, void, main, and of course the string with our command line arguments. So typing string, ARGS with a set of brackets. Open the curly braces. Perfect. So here's just defining the variable, just like what we did in the previous lessons. I'm going to stick to the same structure okay you can change it if you like but just so that you know that we can we'll be defining the variables and then obviously registering the JDBC driver connecting to our database right and then executing a query that's the idea and we'll also throw in some exceptions to catch those errors so let's go right ahead it's actually great practice so I'm going to go ahead and say connection C O N N equals null and then statement stmt equals null also after this I'm going to go ahead and do the try block so try and then of course our next step is to register the JDBC driver so let's just do class for name and this is going to contain the com.mysql colon jdbc and then dot driver close the quotations and a semicolon so the next step is obviously to open and create the connection to your database so let's go ahead and simply do a system dot out dot print in and here I'm just going to go ahead and display a message saying connecting to the database so connecting to the database close the quotations once I have the system dot out dot print in I'm going to go ahead and say CONN equals driver manager and this is to create the connection to our database so dot get connection that's what I'm looking for and within the parentheses I need to specify the path right so starting off with JDBC and then right after JDBC colon MySQL that's the actual syntax colon couple of forward slashes localhost and then of course I need the port number for the SQL which is 3306 forward slash here I would need the name of the database so I'm gonna say Java rocks because that's the one that we've been using so far close the quotations comma open the quotations again here's the root which is basically the administrator and then after root I need a password so in this instance is blank if there was one obviously you would enter between these two quotations semicolon great so once our connection has been made just need to print out a message such as system dot out dot print in 
just a success message right that we're connected you are now connected to the database so the connection has been made at this point and the user knows next obviously is to execute the query so let's go ahead and do a system dot out dot print in and just saying inserting data or records into the table called students so this is what basically is going to display so let me go ahead and next we need the actual query right so I'm gonna go ahead and do stmt equals and then use the create statement method so conn dot create statement semicolon and next I begin with my SQL query so string SQL equals and let me scroll down make some spaces here so my query is going to be basically the insert command in SQL right so I'm gonna go ahead and insert data so open the quotations insert in all caps into in other words into a table right so let's say students and next I need to define the values right so the actual data that is going to be input into the table so the values are going to be and notice our fields are the primary key ID field the first name last name and the age so let's verify first by just navigating to our backend database whether these fields are correct or not so let me go ahead and navigate to my web server here my PHP admin and if I click on Java rocks which is the name of the database and here's the table called students so if I click on this and navigate to the structure I'll have the field so it's the ID first last name and then of course age so these are the four fields that I can use to input data perfect let's navigate back to our Eclipse editor so now the values that I need to enter are as follows so the first value is going to be the ID right so I can start with something like let's say 800 for example and this could be the student ID a unique ID that I will specify so right after 800 I'm going to put a comma and then the name so let's go ahead and say John for example I also need a last name so how about Smith I'm just making this up right just so you can see and then of course the age which is about 22 and all of this obviously goes in the parentheses with a semicolon so this is the value for the students table let me quickly fix up the syntax up here the quotations in fact go inside perfect right here awesome all right so my first value obviously is 800 John Smith in other words I have the ID first name last name and then the age straightforward next I need to execute and update the SQL so for example let's go ahead and do stmt dot execute and then once I execute the query in fact I need to update use execute update and then use the SQL parameter semicolon and fix up the syntax quickly up here this quotations goes after 22 perfect so once I fix up the syntax let me go ahead and do the statement execute update which I did and next I'm gonna go ahead and do the SQL equals and do the same thing again so this time I'm going to go ahead and do the insert for instance into and then the name of the table which is students now up here the first string is actually going to be the name 
So this is going to equal, let's say, I want to make sure it's lowercase, I believe. Perfect. So here I'm inserting into, let's say, the students table. And again, the values, right? So I need to concatenate the value by using the plus sign. And then the values are going to be, for instance, let's say values and then open the parentheses. The next student is going to be 801, for instance, comma. And then the name of the student is going to be, let's say, Chris and then comma Portman, for example. And all of this is within single quotes. And of course, I need the comma and then the age, which could be 25. Close the parentheses, and of course, I need the semicolon. Perfect. So once that's done, I again need to execute and update the SQL, right? So I'm just going to copy this and then paste it down here. Okay. All right. Let's enter maybe another one. So same thing, just going to repeat this now, okay? So I'm just going to copy this, for example, the SQL statement, and then paste it. So this time it's going to insert into students. Value is going to be 802. And the name could be Amanda. And I'm going to just change the last name. Stevens, for example. And this could be 21 and run the same statement or stmt.execute and update the statements. And likewise, you can add as many records as you like. It's really up to you. So I'm just going to demonstrate with these three so you get the idea. So once I'm done with adding records, I'm going to go ahead and do system.out.println. And I'm just going to say something like, inserted records into the table please verify great so just a simple output message now once I'm done with this next I'm gonna come up with my exceptions right so the try block the catch block and so on so let's scroll down and start with our exceptions so let's close the curly braces let's go ahead and do catch SQL exception use the SE for this open the curly braces and of course first we are going to handle the errors for the JDBC so let's just do SE dot print stack once we're done with this I'm gonna go ahead close the curly braces let's do catch again and this time this is going to be for the exception only so exception e once again open the curly braces and instead of se this is going to be the e dot print stack okay perfect so how about perfect and without the any parameters right so just the method here all right so once i'm done with the second catch this is to handle errors for the class for name that we did above. Next, I'm going to go ahead and close the curly braces and bring up our finally block. So finally, with two L's, open the curly braces. And this is used to close the resources. So let's go ahead and do try open the curly braces and couple of conditional statements right one for the stmt null the other one for the conn null so let's go ahead and do those quickly so if stmt for example is not equal to null simply do conn dot close and then catch the sql exception se perfect SE and then open the curly braces and then simply do nothing for here and then go ahead and do the 
try for the next one. So here, if, let's scroll down, the CONN, right? We use the STMT not equal to null above. Here, we are going to say CONN not equal to null and just repeat the same steps primarily. Simply go ahead and do CONN.close. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and close the curly braces and do the catch. And I'm catching the SQL exception. SQL exception, SE. Open the curly braces. And then, of course, I need the SE.print stack. Great. And my curly braces are closed. So are the rest of them. Perfect. So in this lesson, we took a look at how to insert records, right? Now, we have not executed them. Let me go ahead and execute this code so we can actually see what happens. So let's scroll up, verify our database is correct, which is Java Rocks, for example, and then inserting into the students table and all these three students that just signed up for this class. So let's go ahead and execute and run this. So click on the Run button. Save and Launch dialog box appears. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And let's see. Scroll up. What do we have? We are getting something like class not found exception, the JDBC driver, right? So let's find out our syntax for the JDBC and see if it's correct or not. And of course, I need to make sure that this is a dot up here, not a colon. Perfect. Let's try it again. Let's execute and click OK to save. And this time, what do we have? One more time. So the first thing worked. And you have an error in your SQL syntax. All right, perfect. Let's take a look at our syntax here for the SQL. Let's try to identify the error. And let's go ahead and try to fix some syntax. So I just need some spaces. For instance, after students here, let's save it, run it again. And perfect. So it's connected to the database and it displays the message. You're now connected to the database, inserting data or records into the table called students is fine and then now it inserted records into into the table please verify so of course you need to make sure that you have to have the empty space right as part of the SQL syntax after each of the insert statements so keep this in mind so in order to verify let's navigate to the PHP my admin backend database and click on the Java rocks database Here's the student folder. And of course, once I click on it, I should have the records. So let's go ahead and try it out. And perfect. So I have John Smith, Chris Portman, and Amanda Stevens, right? So here are the IDs, the first names, last names, and then the ages. So this way, we can write Java programs and then enter or add records to an existing database. So I hope this helps practice. And let's move to the next lesson.